Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary with a nice video for you. Today I want to talk about collecting and especially, specifically I want to talk about responsible, reasonable collecting as opposed to obsessive or addictive type of collecting. Um, this video I want to say comes out of a, a question from a subscriber who said, hey I see you're a preacher and a Christian, I am too. Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, how do you, how do you think through and justify knife collecting, which is a fairly material pursuit uh, while being a faithful uh, practicing Christian. Uh, so I think there are some principles there that apply not only to me, but to anyone. I don't care what your background is, what your belief system is. There are some really healthy principles that I apply and that I think anyone should apply to any collection or, or hobby or, or material practice of any kind, whether it be sports or, you know, a different collection or a toothpick, toothpick statue you made out of glue, you know, whatever. Um, let me uh, share with you something that the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, okay? There, he's talking about material pursuits, and he says this, all things are lawful for me. That is, there are a lot of material things, there are a lot of hobbies, there are a lot of possessions that would be fine for me to do, but they're not all helpful. Okay, some of them could be harmful, and I'm going to avoid those harmful things, and I'm not going to allow material things to damage me or my life. Not all, and then he goes on to say, all things are helpful, lawful for me, but not, but I will not be mastered by anything. Okay, and so again, there are lots of things that I could engage in that are happy and healthy and normal and fine, but if I become obsessed, if I become controlled by some material pursuit, that's not good and that's not healthy. All right, and so those two principles are the principles that I think have to be. Um, applied and are the principles that you need to examine when when you're collecting too okay if your collection is harming you if it's damaging your lifestyle your family your relationships then, then it's a bad deal like you're then collecting is not fun anymore okay further if you're obsessed if it's mastering and controlling you you know if you have to decide what to do with your paycheck every week by based on what knives you want to buy why, you know, that's probably a little overboard, okay? You need to make sure that you're in charge, that you're guiding this ship. Ultimately, of course, I would say God is guiding the ship and all of my possessions ultimately belong to him and are, can be used for his service in some way, all right? But you have to make sure that you're not being controlled by any material possession or pursuit, all right, and you know, drugs and alcohol are obvious ones, and they're they they we tend to avoid them more because we know of those dangers. But the reality is, your car, your job, your family, uh, your your knife collection could all get into an unhealthy place in your life. All right, that's just the reality. So, here are some guidelines that I use that help me to keep my collection in check, that allow me to feel good about the knives that I own and purchase and not have to deal with guilt and irresponsibility and all that kind of stuff, okay? Number one, no secrets, okay? So I don't buy stuff, I don't sell stuff. I'm not saying I have to ask my, ask my wife's permission to buy everything, I don't. She's very good about that, but I do tell her. You know, if I, uh, if I sold this Code 4 for, for 100 bucks, I say, hey, I sold knife today, got a hundred bucks for it, I, I'm, I'm looking at this or that to buy with, with those funds, okay? So, no secrets. If you've got to keep secrets about what you're doing, you, you know, that's pretty, that, that should be a major red flag for you right there, all right? Um, don't, don't let your collection hurt you, right? If you're not paying bills or you're not putting food on the table, uh, if you don't have, you know, if you can't afford gas in the car because you're buying knives, that's a bad, right? And I, I suspect most of us are not in that situation, but that that's that's how an addiction works, okay? Addiction, the, the most surest sign of addiction is I'm doing it to my own, I'm harming myself to engage in this practice or engage in this hobby. So, uh, don't keep secrets. Number two, and this one is Outside of those first principles I gave you, I won't be mastered and I won't be harmed by anything. Uh, this is going to be the very next one. Make a list. This is so helpful. You have no idea. When you make a list of the knives that you want, or and this could be true of any other collection, I suppose, although I wouldn't know how to do it with other collections. Uh, with knives, I put the knife on the list, and then it, it helps me a lot because, number one, it stops me from impulse buying. 
okay? If I watch a YouTube video and I think, hey, this is an awesome knife, I, you know, I really need to get one of these, put it on the list, take a breath, <laughs> right? Now, maybe, maybe I decide I really don't like it. Maybe I watch a couple other videos and they point out things that the first guy missed that make me not like the knife. Maybe this H6, they go, hey, this is a cool knife, uh, but no one mentions that it weighs nine ounces. And I go, nine ounces, that's wild, I'm not buying that, okay? Uh, maybe it's too small. You know, maybe uh, in, in one guy's hand, this knife, this zero, zero tolerance looks really big, but it turns out that the blade is only two and a half inches long. That's not a knife for me, okay? It could look awesome in that one video, and maybe that guy likes small knives, but I'm gonna skip it. So if it went on the list, that gives me a chance to think it through and decide to take it off, okay? Number two, it gives me a chance to figure out what I wanna pay and where I wanna get it and all that kind of stuff. And, and sometimes, you know, a knife, here's a perfect example. My Spyderco Military, Titanium Military. Love this knife. I wanted one of these for a long time. I'll bet you three years this was on the list. So I put it on the list and waited and waited and waited and, and eventually I was able to get one for a price that I was happy with. And I, I love this knife, I enjoy it all the time. I carry it, it's great. But because I put it on the list, I didn't blow you know 300 bucks on it or something like that. I didn't buy it on a whim or get a bad deal or anything like that. I was able to have some control and thought process that went into it. Same is true of this knife, actually. I really wanted a 0560. You know, I was I was watching all the videos when they first came out and people were getting them and talking about how awesome they were and, oh man, I wanted one so bad. But I waited. And eventually I got one for a price that I was happy with and I could totally enjoy the knife. I love this thing to pieces, okay? but it did take me some time, probably a year and a half, three or four years for the military, at least a year, maybe a year and a half for the ZT. Uh, you know, you're better off to bide your time and, and wait and get the price you want at, from the place you want. That way, if there's any issues, you know, it turns out a certain production run was really bad, you can avoid that stuff, all because you put the thing on the list. Number two, determine what you're going to spend and where that money's gonna come from. Okay, so there are lots of ways to do this. A lot of guys, probably the most common way of doing this is to say, look, I'm only gonna spend the, my money that I have in PayPal on knives. Okay, if it's not my PayPal balance, I'm not spending it, okay? And so maybe that means if you're, if you're buying a knife like this, you're gonna to have to wait a while, okay? You know, every once in a while, here and there, you put a few bucks in your PayPal until you have enough to afford something more high-end like a Remedy. Uh, if it's something like this, you know, the real steal or or like this, maybe you can buy it right away. Okay, so that's great. Uh, determine how much you're gonna spend. Maybe it's a prepaid, pre, pre, prepaid credit card. Maybe it's a credit card that has a low balance so that you can't overspend or if it gets, if, if you get, if it gets stolen or, or there's a scam, you know, you're not out that much money. You know, those are all good ways. Maybe you've got a side job. Maybe you make a little money on the side shoveling snow or helping a buddy put roofs on or whatever. You know, you say, Those are, that's the only funds I'm going to use. Those are all great ways of, of saying, this is how much I'm going to spend, and that's it. And you don't have to spend a lot to get some great knives. Uh, by the way, here's another benefit of putting knives on the list. All right, all of these new cold steels came out this, this last year, 2015. They were awesome, okay, and they are awesome. But when they came out, a lot of them were like 120, 130. They were pretty high up there. Most of them have now, like the Ultimate Hunter, the Recon 1, the American Lawman, they, a lot of them have come down quite a bit. Okay. Number three, know the market, okay, and develop some, some checks and balances. So maybe you say, you know, I don't buy a knife until I've done some research. I look at how much different places are charging. I think how much is it going to cost for shipping. I, you know, now in Canada, I always have to do the exchange. I never buy a knife without figuring out the exchange rate because I just want to know in real dollars how much I'm spending. Okay, and finally, know your comfort level. Maybe, maybe it's just not in your in your bones to own a 500, 600, whatever hundred dollar knife. Maybe over a hundred dollars is not cool for you. So there you go, guys. Those are some guidelines to keep your collection reasonable and responsible and keep you healthy and happy and loving all the knives that you have or knives that you don't have, okay? 
uh, let me know in the comments below some rules that you have, some guidelines that you go by. And the reason I ask that is because there's probably things that I've forgotten that would either help me or help somebody else who's watching. So go ahead and, and share that in the comments below if you don't mind. We'll talk to you soon.